Hello and welcome back to Buckle Up. I'm Harry King and this is a Kia Stonic. It's Kia's smallest crossover, but is it any good? Let's begin as usual here at the front and I actually want to start with the colour. If I was naming the colours for these cars, I would call this very yellow. Speaking of colour, I'll also mention the contrast black elements around here. You have a fake grill, thumbs down, sorry, sorry Kia, but a fake tiger nose grill and then a, a, a real lower grill for the engine with some matte silver right at the bottom there to make it a little bit more roughy tufty and off-roady. This is a crossover after all. Uh, you also get some lovely sharp LED headlights and then moving down the side you get a continuation of that colour contrast. You get these gloss black mirror caps on this sporty GT Line S model and you get more of this matte silver going on on the roof bars as well which again add to the roughy tufty SUV-ness of the whole thing. On this side of the car there isn't a filler cap. This is a hybrid but not a plug-in but I'll get onto that a bit later. You've also got 17 inch alloy wheels. I think they're very nice, they're sort of quadranty. Lovely stuff. But what's it like around here? So here at the back you get that GT line badge which lets you know that this is the sporty design package. Uh, you also get Kia's new logo. You appear to not get any kind of handle for the boot lid, but you do. It's down here. So we enter the Stonix boot and we discover that there is a significant load lip. There is a false floor in here, or what appears to be a false floor, but then you can't actually really raise it up at all. So it, it it's kind of immaterial. Actual boot space is 352 litres, which is all right for this size of car, but is quite a long way off class leading. Uh, some B-segment crossovers offer you over 450 litres of space in the boot. Um, it will be more space than a B-segment hatchback, however, which is the real reason people are buying these, is for that extra bit of practicality. With the seats folded down, that goes up to a whopping 1,155 litres. And thanks to the way the floor is done, you do get a continuous load space, so you can slide things all the way to the front, and those seats do lie nearly flat. But again, not quite as practical as some of the rivals. I think I want to just address that generally, actually. This is one of those crossovers where it's not so much a shrunken down SUV as it is a hatchback with slightly higher suspension. You can see it's got a fairly standard hatchback rear end. And also, I mean, I'm 180 centimetres tall and I'm, I'm clearly a lot taller than this car. So that's kind of why you don't get as much luggage space as you might in something like a Renault Captur or a Peugeot 2008. But we'll see if it pays dividends, the lower profile, the slightly smaller overall size when we get to the driving. However, for now, I just wanted to mention before I climb into the rear seats, you have a nice little slot here where you could put your seat away and then when you fold the seat back up your seat belt doesn't get caught but let's see what it's like in there okay so here we are in the back seats of the stonic uh, this seat is in my driver's position and i will start by saying that i do not fit comfortably behind myself as i've just said i'm 180 centimeters tall or 5 foot 11 and yeah with this seat in this position my right knee is wedged in between the door and the side of the seat i can't actually get my knees in behind the seat but for smaller adults and children there would be plenty of space here or if you have a smaller driver um, because headroom is okay um, if you're over six foot you start to get tight on headroom but i fit in just about my head's just touching the roof here um, width wise it's pretty all right provided you don't have a middle passenger. So the middle seat is not too elevated and fairly wide. So if you've got three children to put in the back, they will be okay. Speaking of children in the back, you've got Isofix. 
It's just exposed rings. You don't have to worry about covers or zips or Velcro or any of that stuff. You get one USB down here in the center and you get one seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. There's nothing on the driver's seat and there's no center armrest. Otherwise, materials in here are pretty nice. You've got cloth on the seat centers and then a sort of vinyl on the outer seats. But let's see what the materials are like in the front. Here we are on the front and let's talk materials first. Like I said, there are quite a lot of harder plastics in here. So the top of the dash, the top of the doors, this carbon fiber is all a hard material. However, it feels nice and solid and thick and sturdy. So in terms of longevity and still looking good in seven years time, length of the Kia warranty, I think this will stand the test of time, maybe slightly better than some other interiors in the segment. Um, you do get bits of soft touch. I've got a nice steering wheel with sort of perforated leather on it. The soft touch on the armrest on the doors and on the top of the armrest here. And the seats themselves are the same. The cloth centers with the sort of vinyl leather outer sections, harder wearing and then more comfortable. And there's lots of adjustability in here. So for me, I really like it because you can get nice and low in this car. And I know that's not necessarily why everyone buys crossovers, but if you like having a sporty, seating position this will give it to you however you can jack the seat right up it's on a ratchet lever oh i'm there i'm there at the top of travel um which i can just fit my head in now so if you want a, a higher seating position it is available i'll now um very quickly move this back down again yep i've hit rock bottom um, you also can recline the seat, that's just on a lever, so that's nice. Technology in here, so you get an 8 inch infotainment display in all models. It's available with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but in this top spec model, uh, you also do get it with inbuilt navigation if you so wish. It's Kia's usual system with the lovely purple motif that they use. Uh, you also get a analog gauge cluster with a central digital screen and you do control some of the car settings through that rather than through here but it works well it's very responsive and the apple carplay and android auto works perfectly fine connects to my phone no bother at all you also got separate controls for your air conditioning it's one climate zone but it is proper climate control and you've got real buttons and everything and heated seat and a heated steering wheel, very premium. Storage wise, you've got two cubbies in here. You've got like a higher one and then a lower one. Two cup holders, center armrest storage bin, glove box, of course. You have bottle holders in the doors as well as a decent sized door pocket. And you do have one of those weird little fuse box things down here if you want to hide. And most importantly, storage wise, you get somewhere lovely felt lined to put your sunglasses so you're always ready, whatever the weather. Now, important differences between this and nearly all modern cars. Here in the middle, you have this waggly thing. You use this to change gear in conjunction with this third weird pedal that I push with my left foot. That's called a clutch. It's a six speed, but I'll get onto that in the driving. You also have this rod that's upstanding in the center. Uh, this is what's called a hand brake. You apply this when you park rather than pulling a little button. I'll just speak briefly about the powertrain. So yes, this is manual, but it's a hybrid. It's a 48 volt hybrid system. So it's basically just got a super beefy battery in it. Um, and it means that it, it helps the engine at the crank rather than in the gearbox like a lot of other systems do, which allows them to still offer this as a manual. You can get it as a seven speed dual clutch if you so wish. Um, but since we've now said so much about the driving, shall we go and do the driving? Okay, so driving the Kia Stonic, what do we have here? Well, this is a GT Line Plus model, so that's like maximum sporty trim. And it's also got the top powertrain with a one litre three cylinder engine and um, a, a sort of battery thing in the boot. 
and that combined makes 119 horsepower. The car weighs around 1.2 tonnes, so the performance is decent around the 10 second mark, which for a car in this segment of this size is perfectly acceptable. And even though it's a hybrid, mild hybrid, I do have a manual gearbox, which I'm quite a big fan of. Some other things you get as standard, um, um, I mean, you can get a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission as an option, but some things you do get as standard, you get torque vectoring. Wasn't expecting that, to be honest, on your sort of your standard B-segment crossover. You also get special traction control to help you get away from the line in a straight line. These are things you associate more with hot hatchbacks than your family or, I guess, um, compact crossover. But there we go. So ultimately, this is based on the Rio, so it shares underpinnings with the Rio, but this has a very, very stiff body shell, and then they've changed the suspension, and they've utilized the stiff body shell to try and give it responsive handling. So I think they, they do seem to be angling for sort of fun in here, and I've got to say, it's doing a pretty good job so far. The brakes are good. It's a, um, a fairly stiff pedal, but that's quite reassuring. Clutch engagement's good as well. Nice and easy to feed in. Good biting point. Thanks to that mild hybrid system, this engine feels a lot more grunty than it otherwise might. A lot more grunty than maybe a, a turbo petrol engine would feel without hybrid assistance. So you've got a bit more go, sort of under 3000 RPM, which does help around town, but really helps with in-gear acceleration, actually. You've got just got more of a sense that you can just put your foot down and not worry about it. You don't have to be changing all the time to get the most out of the engine. Right, I'm coming up now to a national speed limit road. So I'll just, in second, and I'll roll on. So that's 30, 40, 50, and 60. And that wasn't flat out acceleration, that was just kind of gradually getting up to the speed limit. And there I am in sixth, nice and relaxed. Um, if I just dip down up this hill and then I'll put my foot down in sixth, so that's 55 and I'll put my foot down. And I'm still accelerating up the hills, so that's the benefit of having the extra power from that mild hybrid. You can get this with the same engine without the mild hybrid attached. Um, and that produces 99 horsepower, which would be enough to get you around, don't get me wrong, but it, it's nice to have this little 20% extra power going on. The gearbox is great, actually, having gone through it. I should mention that. It's very, very... Well, I mean, it's a nice tight gate, and it's, it's, it's quite good to go through. It's quite easy to downshift the engine and get the revs right. There's a lot... <laughs> There's a lot about this that makes it quite a good driver's car, which, yeah, was not my expectation in any way at all. Of course, I'm now going behind a Golf that's driving at 40 miles an hour. And because of the torque vectoring, you can absolutely pile this thing into corners and it'll just tuck in. It's fantastic. In terms of the rest of my experience while driving, well, I've got good visibility forwards. I sit slightly higher than I would in a conventional hatchback. Uh, due to the crossover nature. I can see the bonnet. I've also got a decent sized rear window. It's maybe not quite as large as you would expect from a vehicle like this. It is fairly hatchbacky in dimension um, and good size mirrors. And on the driver's side, I've got that extra curve to give me an extra bit of visibility. Obviously, I've got uh, lane departure warning, uh, blind spot monitoring uh, even in the wing mirrors. And in this model, I do have a reversing camera as well. All models get parking sensors as standard. Just hoping that this person, I'm gonna take the next left, which is sort of one of the more fun roads I tend to drive down in these videos. And hopefully I won't be behind this golf and I'll get to show you a bit of what I'm talking about. Cause you, so far you might've been thinking, Harry, what are you talking about? You're driving a B segment crossover. What do you mean it's fun? But it genuinely, it's fun. It feels very planted. And the damping's fabulous. The wheels just relentlessly maintain their contact with the road. Okay, so tuck it in.
So this is a bit of a rise with a, a sort of shift in direction there and then back over again and down and it just I can feel the front of the car tucking in for me and you can put the power in just a bit earlier because you've got these systems working for you but <laughs> why here have gone to the bother of putting the I mean I suppose it also makes the car more safe if you panic if you make a mistake on a corner you're more likely to be able to save the car and prevent an accident if you have control if you have these systems aiding you but it means <laughs> that when you want to press on on a back road this car will hold your hand and and get you down the road and, and you'll have a smile on your face while you're doing it and yeah just that's so easy to just slot it into a gear get the revs just right and the brakes are good too. Oh, I, I'm I'm completely baffled by this car, to be honest. I thought it turned up and it'd be a sort of cheerful little get around for people who want to maybe drive around town or, or someone who wants to downsize now that their kids have left home or something like that. And it's got the usual, it's a nice interior, it's spacious. Um, compared, it feels more spacious than the hatchback thanks to the boxy shape. All of that stuff is still there, but, well, let's say, for example, you're sad that the Ford Fiesta is now leaving us. You don't necessarily have to go and buy a Puma. Other things while driving, well, I've got the central infotainment screen, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as standard on the higher spec models. You do get inbuilt sat-nav. And on the steering wheel, I have, as usual, a suite of driving assist systems. So I've got the uh, smart lane steering thing that'll, that'll keep me between the lines. So it's got tech, it's got all the stuff you want in here. I mean, cause I can do my Spotify and everything. It's got, it'll read the speed limit signs for you. And so far it's, working pretty well it's not been beeping at me all the time you've also got driving modes i have been in sports mode up until now you do also have eco and normal i'll pop it in normal so the engine's a little bit quieter now and the throttle is less aggravated uh, what's the correct way of saying that um less sensitive that's the one and an eco even more of the same again you can properly sling this down a back road like like a light small hatchback fun hatchback and it does benefit yes it's got a raised ride height but the overall vehicle height isn't that tall the overall vehicle weight isn't that heavy the footprint is almost identical to the rio and um, there's just a slightly longer rear overhang back into sport mode i think so it's good it's compact it's easy to park it's easy to drive around town but you do have a bit more boot space, a bit more practicality. You've got a bit more rear passenger space, slightly more headroom in the back. And it, it seems to me that you're not so much sacrificing the things you would usually sacrifice to move to the taller body style of a crossover. Because that's the other thing. If I scroll through my menus, um, this has currently got a, a trip lifetime trip mpg of 47.8 and that's being driven by a motoring journalist so in the real world a normal sane human person will get well into the 50s that's you know that's really good and it's petrol and you don't have to plug it in and charge it up it just runs normally you just fuel it up and i'll tell you what yes some of the interior plastics are hard but visually it's all pretty interesting the steering wheel feels nice my armrest is soft this center one is soft i'm comfortable the seats are comfortable i've got plenty of adjustability i've got everything set just so lots of reach in the steering wheel can get that exactly where i want it i've got a dead pedal if i want to rest my foot on a motorway journey plenty of knee room plenty of shoulder room I don't think I've driven 
a small B segment crossover that I like more than this. In fact, I'm certain. A lot of them have lots of different merits, but I like driving and I like B roads and as far as I'm concerned, this is the pick of the bunch. So, the Kia Stonic. Not only is it just a great little crossover for if you want a small B-segment crossover, but it is genuinely a really fun car to drive. Like, more fun than a lot of B-segment hatchbacks are now. So, this feels like a weird recommendation, but if you're looking for an engaging small car, don't just think about small hatchbacks. Consider this, because I've had so much fun driving this around this week, and, and I think you would too. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Uh, ding the bell to be notified every time we post a video. If you go down to the description, you'll find all of our links for all of our social medias. Please follow us on all of them. We post other interesting and funny things there, and sometimes educational, but not too much. Uh, we also have three ways that you can support the channel. We have channel memberships, where you can pay a monthly amount or give thanks. We have Patreon, and we have a merch store. I'm not wearing any right now, but you could be very shortly if you go there and buy, buy, buy. Um, but otherwise... See you next time. Bye-bye.